Auspicious greetings. I hope you are all doing well. This week, we are going to complete the Women in Buddhism series on Guanin Bodhisattva's powers by bringing you the last three types of Guanin power. Guanin as an empowerer, an encourager of good and meritorious deeds, and a spiritual life coach. Last week, we talked about Guanin's powers as a wise liberator and a beacon of pure land, both of which are related to ultimate liberation. The remaining three types of powers on the list will be connected to daily life practice. The Buddha's teachings must be put into practice, and some of these practices empower us to resolve life's problems overcome challenges, and even transcend the limitations of ordinary life. In Chinese Mahayana Buddhism, not only is Guanyin worshipped and revered so widely because of her power for liberating sentient beings and granting their wishes, it is also due to the spiritual cultivations related to Guanyin that have empowered sentient beings in so many ways. Quite often, the experiences can be coined miraculous. And in other cases, these experiences are said to be transformative on a personal level. Last week, the story about the thousand-armed and thousand-eyed Guanyin statue was mentioned. And the origin of such an image is found in the Great Compassion Dharani Sutra. What are the powers of the thousand-armed and thousand-eyed Guanyin? We must mention the Great Compassion Dharani. In Sanskrit, the Nilankata Dharani or Maha Karuna Dharani. Enjoying a high degree of popularity in East Asia, the Chinese edition comprises 84 lines and is said to be a special chant used by Guanyin to deliver sentient beings. With the empowerment of this Dharani, there is said to be no unresolvable problems, no undeliverable sentient beings, and no unattainable enlightenment. Guanyin Bodhisattva once made a vow that if there be any being who wholeheartedly chants the Great Compassion Dharani, fail to accomplish their wishes, if these are the beings other than those who are unwholesome or insincere, I shall never attain Buddhahood. By sincerely and single-mindedly chanting the Great Compassion Dharani, sentient beings are empowered to attain happiness and peace, subdue all demons and evil, as well as all illnesses, eliminate all calamities, secure their rebirth in the Buddha lands, and forever be safe from the three lower realms of rebirth, that of animals, hungry ghosts, and hell. Those who chant the Dharani will also be empowered by Guanyin's great bodhicitta vow to attain supreme Buddhahood and deliver all sentient beings. Eminent Buddhist masters of the past and present have continued to encourage us to practice chanting this Dharani diligently and without stop. We are reminded that only those with sufficient virtuous roots are blessed enough to even hear about the name of this Dharani let alone chant it and uphold it. Continued chanting of the dharani also leads to endless unimaginable benefits. Many people who follow the instructions by sincerely chanting the dharani with pure minds for up to seven days were said to have supernatural experiences either by seeing the bodhisattva touching their head to bless them with wisdom or seeing unimaginable lights as well as sensing out-of-this-world fragrances. Should you not be among this group of practitioners, don't give up. Don't doubt yourself nor the bodhisattva. Instead, continue to practice with sincerity and firm belief. We are not saying the goal is to experience supernatural responses. Instead, the goal is to rise above your obstacles and allow your virtuous roots to ripen. Think about it this way. 
Running Bodhisattva has already vowed to be by your side as long as you desire so. Even when you're going through the dark patches of life, you will find a way out of ignorance, danger, sickness, and so on. Otherwise, she shall never attain Buddhahood. This is truly a vow of great compassion and immense altruism to relieve all beings from suffering. The meaning of dharani is to embody each and every dharma and uphold the unfathomable meaning. Thus, this secret language or sacred utterance of the Buddhas and Bodhisattvas carry the following meanings. 1. The dharani contains names of spirit or devi kings that will keep the less powerful spirit or devis in line, so none will commit any wicked acts to cause harm. 2. The dharani is like an army decree that disciplines all beings and punishes any action that violates the decree. 3. The dharani embodies a secret power that can eliminate your unwholesome karma without you knowing so. 4. The dharani is a secret language among Buddhas. Since it is not meant to be understood by ordinary beings, the utterances are never meant to be translated lest the meaning becomes distorted. Like a compassionate mother who upholds us and keeps us protected, Guan Ning is always there to help us resolve life's problems and fulfill our real-life needs. Guan Ning actually empowers us through the chanting of dharanis or mantras or mudras and contemplation. But today, let's just focus on the practice of dharanis to understand such a profound power. If you have not yet learned to memorize the Great Compassion Dharani, you can also recite the six-syllable mantra, Om Mani Padme Hum, which is also a great mantra of Guan Ying to help purify our three karmas and grant her blessings and protection. The fifth type of guanin power is an encourager of good and meritorious deeds. Not only is guanin a keen giver of a helping hand to those who are suffering, she also actively encourages all beings to do good deeds themselves. Teaching by example, she reminds us continually the importance of reaching out to the deprived and needy. In fact, she is like the spokesperson of good deeds and altruistic practices. Not only has Guan Ying successfully purified immeasurable wicked and evil hearts and turned these beings towards kindness and good deeds, she is also regarded as an icon of morality in Chinese Mahayana Buddhism. Once there was a very hot-tempered butcher who treated his elderly mother badly. He was unfilial and always shouted at her. The only good thing was that he still knew to revere Guan Ying and pray to her for good business as well as a beautiful bride. As the butcher prayed to Guan Ying sincerely, so did his elderly mother. Her silent prayers were for her to one day manifest in front of her son and change his bad attitude so she would no longer be afraid of her son. Guan Ying responded to both of them. She manifested as a lady who offered water to the butcher at the foot of the mountain and told him that Guan Ying was waiting inside his house for him. She also told the butcher that Guan Ying would be dressed with her robe turned inside out and shoes worn on the wrong feet. The butcher thanked the woman and rushed home to find Guan Ying. As it was already past midnight, his mother was already in bed. When the butcher shouted for his mother to open the doors, the mother panicked and mistakenly put on the wrong shoes and her robe inside out. When the butcher saw his mother rushing to open the door in such an attire, he finally realized that she had been the Guan Ying who always looked after him. In this story, the unfilial son finally realized that his own mother is the Guan Ying whom he should revere respect, and be kind to. Having demonstrated the importance of filial piety, Guan Ying's belief is thus widely accepted by the Confucian-influenced Chinese. In another incident, 
There was a devout Buddhist who went to a temple every day to pay deep respect and made offerings of delicious food and daily supplies to Guaning. One day, Guaning manifested in front of him and said, No matter how good the food you offer me, I can never eat them. I just don't need them. Instead, go and take a look outside the temple and see all those poor and hungry people. Feeding them and helping them will accumulate as much merit as doing the same for me. The man obeyed Guaning's instruction and went on to help the poor. The above two stories are just among the countless similar stories of Guaning manifestations that are told throughout the history of Chinese Buddhism to show that encouraging people to do good by helping others, which in turn accumulates merits, is also a significant part of the Guaning belief. Merit is a good thing for those who pursue goodness. Regarding the accumulation of merits as depositing money in the bank, each day's meritorious deeds will surely lead to a good outcome in the future. For those who do not expect anything in return, you will still have such good karmic merits stored for the future. Or, as an option, redirect your merits to your family, friends, and anyone in need. For this, Encouraging people to accumulate good merits by doing good deeds is regarded as one of Guaning's great powers. The final type of Guaning power is a spiritual life coach. While worldly life coaches help people make progress in their lives, feel better, and to attain greater fulfillment on a personal or professional level, Guaning is a life coach who helps us power through to the greater spiritual attainment. Added with her power as a wise liberator, Guaning helps the lost and confused develop greater awareness and insight so they can learn to navigate through life on their own. Many followers of Guaning turn towards mystic manifestations or divination to seek directions in life. As this is a common need among religious followers, and that Guaning does have the supreme powers to satisfy sentient beings' needs in this way, Guaning is thus recognized as a beacon of life, a spiritual life coach who offers support and instruction to make the right choices. Although the stories of how Guaning points out directions in life are not found in the Buddhist sutras, there are nevertheless records of devout Buddhists who received her support. Ashavadana, an Indian prince of northern India, lost his father and brother during the invasion by neighboring kingdoms. In order to save his kingdom, he deliberated assuming the throne and attacking back to reclaim his land. However, he turned to a statue of Guaning by the side of the Ganges for help in making the decision. Guaning manifested herself and suggested that he does not do so. Do not assume the throne. Instead, delve into the profound teachings of Dharma to master the way of a ruler. Pashapadana listened to Guaning and eventually became a powerful emperor who expanded his kingdom to South India. When Master Xuanzang went west, he came across a statue of Guaning which was said to offer tremendous supernatural responses to prayers and wishes. Master Xuanzang too had three queries that needed answers. 1. I have risked my own life to come this far to India. Will I be able to return to China safely? 2. Can I, in this present life, Realize my greatest spiritual aspiration of being reborn in Tushita Pure Land and cultivate alongside Maitreya Bodhisattva. 3. The biggest question among Buddhists in China is whether Buddha nature is universal. Is it possible for all living beings to attain Buddhahood? He offered flowers to Guaning and placed them on different parts of the statue. Each time, Guaning gave an affirmative answer to his question. Yes, you will be able to return to China safely. Yes, 
You will be reborn into Shita Pure Land. Yes, all beings possess the Buddha nature. Such responses greatly encouraged all the witnesses in India who pleaded to Xuanzang to please come back and deliver them when he attained Buddhahood. As a wonderful spiritual life coach, Guan Ning offered Xuanzang the greatest answers about ultimate liberation. There is also the story about Bhava Viveka who relied on the directions given by Guan Ning to find Maitreya Bodhisattva. After the Guan Ning belief passed into China from India, the Chinese came up with the Guan Ning slips that are drawn from a tub of bamboo sticks after making sincere prayer. On each slip is a poem or verse that requires deep reflection and pondering in order to understand what instruction Guan Ning has given. While this is entirely a production of the signification of the Guan Ning belief, in reality, such practice has nevertheless offered some kind of inspiration, encouragement and pointers towards doing good deeds for good merits in order for one's wishes to be fulfilled. In conclusion, based on the six types of Guanning powers we have discussed over these weeks, we can regard Guanning as an archetype of compassion. A figure of compassion is always heartwarming, makes you feel safe, accepts you unconditionally for who you are, is ready to offer you the kind of help you need, and can never bear to see you suffer. That's why in these three lessons, I have referred to Guan Ning as a she. Though generally presented as a male in India, Tibet and Nepal, Avalokiteshvara is said to possess gender fluidity and ultimately is regarded as a bodhisattva who has transcended gender. However, other than the reasons of being an archetype of compassion as just said, another reason for the tendency towards a feminine representation of Avalokiteshvara in China has to do with the fact that the Chinese often pray to Guan Ning for children, especially sons. This often worked, and statues of Guan Ning in certain temples would become known for their ability to bestow sons, such as an ivory statue at the Metropolitan Museum of Art that represents Guan Ning as the bestower of sons. Whichever we prefer, anyone who has faith in Guan Ning and believes in her supernatural responses should remember to always pay respect to Guan Ning, chant her name, or visualize her image with a pure mind an undistracted mind, so that we can be one with Guan Ning in body, speech, and mind. Just as described in the Avatamsaka Sutra, the Bodhisattva is like the cool moon that courses through ultimate emptiness. Once the sentient minds are purified of tainted thoughts, the moon of Bodhi wisdom shall manifest instantly. We too contemplate Guan Ning in the same way. My heart is the heart of Guan Ning, and Guan Ning's heart is my heart. This way, we shall truly be blessed with Guan Ning's powers. Ultimately, the significance of believing in Guan Ning is not just to pray to Guan Ning for blessings or venerate Guan Ning for merits, but to actually be a Guan Ning ourselves by emulating her powers of a wish granter, a wise liberator, a beacon of pure land, an empowerer, an encourager of good and meritorious deeds, and last but not least, a spiritual life coach. Just as Venerable Master Xingyun says, uplift the downhearted with the Bodhisattva's power of encouragement. Relieve and save the distress with the Bodhisattva's power of a liberator. Support the despaired with the Bodhisattva's power of an empowerer. Guide the lost and confused with the Bodhisattva's power of a spiritual life coach. Thank you for listening. May we all become Guaning to those in need. Don't forget to end today's session by listening to Venerable Master Xingyun's prayer to Avalokiteshvara Bodhisattva. Thank you. May Guaning bless you.